This month in Poppy Loves Book Club, we read Sisters of Treason by Elizabeth Fremantle, published by Penguin. This month we have Elizabeth Fremantle with us. Um, this month's book was Sisters of Treason, so welcome Elizabeth. I know you were here a year ago. Um, so it's really exciting to have you back. We've never had an author come back and talk to us. <laughs> oh, 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 no, so really, I'm the first. Yeah. Oh, it's very, I'm honoured. It's very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, so just a couple of few questions before we start our book club. Um, and my first question would be, why have you gotten into your historical fiction? What is it that interests you about that period? Well, that's a good question. I mean, in a sense, I'm not sure. It's... I. I'm really interested in that particular period because I studied English at university and I did lots of courses on early modern women writers. And so for me that period, the 16th century, is really interesting because you start, women start to kind of, they start to write, they start to find their voice. There are documents that you can read that allow you to have a glimpse of what they were like as people and so those women always really fascinated me and then I'd been writing contemporary fiction and it really wasn't working I'd written three novels I couldn't get published it was it was uh, really difficult and um, I'd sort of always had in the back of my mind this idea to write a novel about Catherine Parr which is the, who was the heroine of Queen's Gambit as you know um, and so I thought, well, I'll give it a go. But I'd always thought, well, I'm not a historian. I don't really have the right to do it. And I thought, well, you know, let's just see what happens. And of course, that was the book that really broke through for me. And, and, okay. and then I haven't really looked back. And there are always these really interesting women to write about. And the period now, you know, I know it so well. And I can, I'm moving on in time. I'm moving into the Stuart period. And, and the research all feeds in from one to the other and there are just so many great stories to tell. So I don't know if I'll ever finish doing <laughs> it. <laughs> you mentioned that you previously studied English. Did you always know you wanted to go into writing? Is that what you went into straight away? Well, I always knew I wanted to be a writer, and, but I kind of messed up my education. I managed to get expelled from two schools. <laughs> <laughs> Though not for doing anything really naughty, I don't know. But so I never did my A-levels and I never went to university. And then subsequently, I kind of managed to kind of get myself on track and I worked my way up and I was working in the fashion business. I was working for fashion magazines. And I started off as the kind of office dog's body and worked my way up. And, and it was all well and good, but I always wanted to be a writer. And... I don't know if you know, but when you are a fashion editor, it involves very, very little writing, and it's mostly about the images. I mean, I really wanted to be a writer, but I felt that the fact that my education hadn't been finished, that I, you know, I wasn't really qualified to write. And so eventually, I, there was a moment when I had the opportunity to go back to university, my children were little and I went to Birkbeck where you study in the evenings. So I kind of juggled working freelance and I, I went and did a degree in English in my 30s. And then I thought, right now, now I'm going to be a writer. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out like that. You know, I got an agent, and then, but it just didn't work. And then for three novels I wrote, it still didn't work. It took me 10 years to, to start doing the historical novels, and, and it's been the thing, that was the thing that kind of unlocked me as a writer. Yeah. Yeah. It's all written from the women's perspective. The novels that we've read so far, and your book that's coming out this year as well, yes. have you ever thought or tried going into a man's brain and, and writing from that perspective? Actually, funny you should say that, because the new book, Watch the Lady, is half of it is narrated by a man. Oh, OK. So, <laughs> so I've got this sort of to and fro, and they are... You know, he's the antagonist to her story, and he, it was a really, really fascinating process to not only write from a male perspective, but he's quite a complex and, un, on the surface, very unsavoury character, so it was really fascinating getting beneath his skin. So do you have to change your tone and language when you write as a man? I think for each character, each character has, has their own vocabulary, really, and their own rhythm, and so each voice is 
very clearly identifiable. Well, if I'm doing it right, that's how it is. <laughs> so I don't so much think of gender when I'm doing that. And, it, and once you get into the character, it just all comes naturally. And, you know, the eye is different because I think men look at the world differently. So he, he notices different things from her. And, you know, so they, and there's this kind of dance going on between them. And it was really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So now we're going to get to know a little bit more about you and we're going to place the setting of your perfect day. I want you to imagine that this is your perfect day and where is it that you would be waking up? Well on my perfect day I will wake up in my own house because I love being at home. I'm a real homebody and I've got the best bedroom and, <laughs> and a bed that's really comfortable and you know I make it really really nice because why shouldn't I? <laughs> and so I'd wake up there um, and probably would have, my children would be there, but they probably wouldn't wake up when I do, unfortunately. <laughs> what music is it that you would listen to? Well, you know, I don't often listen to music at home, but certainly in the morning when I wake up, I always listen to Radio 4, so it's the Today programme, which sometimes has me shouting at the radio. And in fact, when I'm working, I always have the radio on in another room, so it sort of sounds like people are having a conversation, at, you know, somewhere else. I can't hear what they're saying, and it's it's quite a nice, reassuring thing when I'm on my own. Yeah. What clothes would you be wearing? Oh gosh, what would I be wearing? I'm a bit of a comfort junkie, so I would probably be wearing my most comfortable pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> what would you eat? What would I eat? Well, I would, oh, I tell you what, I'd want to go to uh, Pizza East <laughs> and have their avocado, chili avocado on toast with a poached egg on top. It's oh, wow. the best. <laughs> That's what I'd eat to start with. What books would you read? Um, actually, I brought along, didn't I, my okay. book that um, is, well, I've got, this is my favourite recent read. Sarah Waters, The Paying Guest. I'm a massive Sarah Waters fan, so I read everything she writes. <laughs> and this one is just spectacular. It's a wonderful, wonderful story that starts off as a kind of complicated love story and then transforms into a courtroom drama. Oh, wow. It's really, it's amazing. I thoroughly recommend it. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. And I think everybody's arriving um, to talk to you now, so we should probably finish off and have a quick chat with everyone else. Great, look forward to that. Great, thank you. See you next month. Poppy Loves Book Club is no ordinary book club. Poppy Loves Book Club sees women from all around the world, all reading the same book at the same time. And then we all come together online on the last Wednesday of every month to discuss it. The really exciting bit is often the author joins us as well, so you can post your questions to them directly. If you would like to join Poppy Loves Book Club, it's really, really easy. There are just two things you need to do. Number one, sign up. Number two, join the Poppy Loves Book Club Facebook group. Just head over to my blog, poppyloves.co.uk, and follow the links to Book Club. I really look forward to seeing you online soon.